Hello from America and welcome back to our channel. Over the past few days, we have received sad news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we'll recap the stars we lost recently. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your assistance. If this video or the legacy of these remarkable individuals has touched your life, Please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank. Brother Marquis, who passed away at the age of 58 on June 3rd, was an American rapper and a pioneer of Miami Bass. Born Mark Ross on April 4, 1966, in Rochester, New York, he moved to Los Angeles, California, with his mother during his teenage years. Ross began his musical journey with the Cautious Crew in the early 1980s and soon caught the attention of DJ and producer David Hobbs, also known as Mr. Mix. This encounter led Ross to join the iconic rap group Two Live Crew. Brother Marquis quickly became an integral part of Two Live Crew, known for his comedic sensibilities and dynamic battle rap abilities. The group, which included Hobbs, Christopher Wong Wan, and Luther Campbell, achieved significant success with their gold-certified debut album, The Two Live Crew Is What We Are, in 1986. Their explicit humor and provocative lyrics stirred controversy, but also brought them widespread attention and acclaim. The group's second album, Move Something, went gold, and their third album, As Nasty As They Wanna Be, achieved platinum status despite being deemed legally obscene by a U.S. district court, a ruling that was later overturned. This legal battle only heightened their notoriety and solidified their place in hip-hop history. Their subsequent albums, Band in the USA and Sports Weekend, As Nasty As They Wanna Be, he and Two continued their streak of gold certifications in the 1990s. Brother Marquis showcased his versatility by forming the duo Too Nasty with DJ Toomp, releasing Indecent Exposure in 1993 and contributing to Ice T's album Home Invasion on the track 99 Problems. This collaboration would later be famously remade by Jay Z. Brother Marquis reunited with two live crew multiple times, releasing notable albums like Shake a Lil Something and The Real One. The group continued to tour and release music, maintaining their influence in the hip-hop scene. Brother Marquis's legacy is marked by his groundbreaking contributions to Miami Bass and his role in one of the most controversial yet influential rap groups in history. His unique blend of humor, lyrical prowess, and fearless expression left an indelible mark on the music industry. Janice Page, who passed away at the age of 101 on June 2nd, was an American actress and singer whose career spanned nearly 60 years, making her one of the last surviving stars from the golden age of Hollywood. Born Donna Mae Chaden on September 16, 1922, in Tacoma, Washington, Paige's journey into the entertainment world began at a young age. She started singing in local amateur shows at five and later moved to Los Angeles, where she became a singer at the Hollywood Canteen during World War II. Her performances there, coupled with her work as a pinup model, led to a film contract with Warner Brothers. Paige's early film roles often paired her with popular actors like Dennis Morgan and Jack Carson in low-budget musicals. She co-starred in Romance on the High Seas, marking Doris Day's movie debut. However, Paige's true passion lay in live theater, and she eventually left Hollywood to pursue Broadway. She found significant success on stage, particularly with her role as Babe in the 1954 musical The Pajama Game, which catapulted her to stardom. Despite a six-year hiatus from film, Paige returned to Hollywood with notable roles in Silk Stockings, Please Don't Eat the Daisies, and Bachelor in Paradise. She also took on dramatic roles, 
such as Lorna in The Caretakers. Her versatility and talent allowed her to seamlessly transition between film, theater, and television throughout her career. In television, Paige starred in her own sitcom, It's Always John, during the 1955-1956 season, and made numerous guest appearances on popular shows like The Fugitive, All in the Family, St. Elsewhere, and Happy Days. She also had recurring roles in series like Eight is Enough, and appeared in various soap operas, including General Hospital and Santa Barbara. Paige's contributions to the entertainment industry were recognized with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960. Her personal life saw her married three times, with her longest marriage being to composer and music publisher Ray Gilbert, which lasted until his death in 1976. Janice Page's legacy is marked by her remarkable talent, resilience, and dedication to her craft. Her performances, whether on stage, screen, or television, left an indelible mark on audiences and solidified her place as a beloved figure in American entertainment history. Entertain Larry Allen, who passed away at the age of 52 on June 2nd while on vacation with his family in Mexico, was an American professional football player renowned for his unparalleled strength and skill as a guard in the National Football League. His legacy stands as one of the strongest and most versatile offensive linemen in the history of the game. Born in Compton, California, Allen overcame a challenging childhood marked by serious health and safety threats. Despite these hardships, he excelled in football, eventually playing for the Butte Roadrunners and Sonoma State Cossacks. His impressive college performance led to his selection by the Dallas Cowboys in the second round of the 1994 NFL Draft. Allen's NFL career spanned 14 seasons, with his first 12 spent with the Dallas Cowboys. He quickly established himself as a cornerstone of the Cowboys' offensive line, earning 10 Pro Bowl selections and six first-team All-Pro honors. His strength and agility were unmatched, enabling him to dominate defenders and protect his quarterback effectively. Allen was instrumental in the Cowboys' victory in Super Bowl XXX over the Pittsburgh Steelers. In 2006, Allen joined the San Francisco 49ers, where he continued to excel earning his 11th Pro Bowl selection before retiring. His remarkable career culminated in his induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2013, a testament to his enduring impact on the sport. Larry Allen's legacy extends beyond his on-field achievements. He is remembered as a player who overcame adversity to reach the pinnacle of professional football. His journey from a troubled youth in Compton to a celebrated NFL star is a source of inspiration for many. Allen's contributions to the game were further honored when he was inducted into the Dallas Cowboys Ring of Honor in 2011. In his personal life, Allen was a devoted family man, residing in Danville, California, and supporting his son, Larry Allen III, who followed in his footsteps as a football player. Larry Allen's legacy as a dominant force in the NFL and a role model for perseverance and excellence will be remembered by fans and players alike. Philippe Leroy, who passed away at the age of 93 on June 1st, was a distinguished French actor whose career spanned over six decades. Born Philippe Leroy Beaulieu on October 15, 1930, in Paris, he hailed from an aristocratic family with a rich heritage. Before his illustrious acting career, Leroy served as a decorated paratrooper in the French Foreign Legion, participating in the First Indochina War and the Algerian War. His military service earned him numerous honors, including the Chevalier of the Légion d'Honneur, the Croix de Guerre des Théâtres d'Opérations Extérieures, and the Cross for Military Valor. Leroy's entry into the world of cinema was marked by his remarkable debut in Jacques Becker's The Hole, for which he received a BAFTA nomination for Best Foreign Actor.
This film set the stage for a prolific career that saw him appear in over 150 films, working extensively in both Italian and French cinema. In 1961, Leroy moved to Italy, where he became a beloved figure in Italian cinema. His notable Italian films included The Terrorist, Seven Golden Men, The Night Porter, and The Cat. He also continued to grace French screens in productions such as Jean-Luc Godard's A Married Woman and Luc Besson's La Femme Nikita. Leroy's television work was equally distinguished. He earned a Primetime Emmy Award nomination for his portrayal of Leonardo da Vinci in the Italian miniseries The Life of Leonardo da Vinci and captivated audiences as Yanez de Gomera in Sandokan. Beyond acting, Leroy led a life of adventure and passion. He was an avid parachutist, celebrating his 80th birthday with a jump, and later spending time with Italian paratroopers in Afghanistan as a special correspondent at the age of 81. Philippe Leroy's legacy is that of a versatile and dedicated actor who left an indelible mark on both European cinema and television. His life was a testament to his unwavering spirit, both on the battlefield and on the silver screen. He is survived by his children, including actress Philippine Leroy Beaulieu, and will be remembered fondly by fans and colleagues alike. James Lawrenson, who passed away at the age of 84 on April 18th, was a distinguished actor whose career spanned over 50 years gracing both stage and screen. Born on February 17, 1940 in New Zealand, Lawrenson's journey took him to London after university, where he embarked on a remarkable career that left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Lawrenson made his film debut in 1969 with a role in Women in Love and quickly became a prominent figure in British theatre and television. His early television work included a role as Reverend Peter Hope in the long-running soap Coronation Street in 1968. Over the decades, he appeared in numerous TV series, including Prime Suspect, Crown Court, Lovejoy, and even U.S. series like Cagney and Lacey and Remington Steel. One of Lawrenson's groundbreaking performances was in a 1970 stage production and television broadcast of Christopher Marlowe's Edward II, where he and Ian McKellen shared the first same-sex kiss on British television. This performance came just three years after the decriminalization of homosexuality in the UK, making it a significant cultural moment. In 2011, Lawrenson was nominated for an Olivier Award for Best Actor in a supporting role for his performance as the Ghost and the Player King in Nicholas Hitner's production of Hamlet. His versatility and talent were evident across his various roles, from Shakespearean plays to his only musical performance in 42nd Street in 1984. Lawrenson's film career included a notable role in Pink Floyd The Wall, and he continued to act in films like Matilda the Musical. His later television roles included appearances in The Terror and The Crown, where he portrayed Dr. Sir John Weir, physician royal to King Edward VIII, and others in the monarchy. James Lawrenson's legacy is that of a talented and versatile actor who broke boundaries and brought depth to every role he played. He is survived by his second wife, Carrie Hessam, and his son Jamie from his previous marriage to actress Carol McCready. His contributions to stage and screen will be remembered and cherished by audiences and colleagues alike. Mark Damon, who passed away at the age of 91 on May 12th in Los Angeles, was an influential figure in the world of film, both as a prolific actor and a pioneering producer. Born Alan Harris in Chicago, Damon was the son of a grocer in a Jewish family originally surnamed Hershowitz. He moved to Los Angeles at a young age, attended Fairfax High School, and initially pursued dental studies at UCLA before switching to the Anderson School of Management, where he graduated with an MBA and a BA in English. 
His passion for acting led him to theater classes, setting the stage for a remarkable career. Damon began his acting career in 1956, signing a contract with 20th Century Fox. His breakthrough came in 1960, when he won a Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year, actor for his role in Roger Corman's House of Usher. Following this success, he moved to Italy and became a notable figure in the spaghetti Western genre, joining the glamorous Dolce Vita set of actors and actresses in Rome. In the early 1970s, Damon transitioned from acting to film production, becoming one of Hollywood's most prolific producers. He founded several production companies, including Producers Sales Organization, Vision International, MDP Worldwide, and Foresight Unlimited. His vision and entrepreneurial spirit revolutionized the international distribution of independent films, earning him a reputation as a trailblazer in pre-selling foreign rights and financing independent productions. Damon's productions have grossed over $2 billion in theatrical box office worldwide. He was directly involved in the international licensing of over 300 feature-length pictures, including blockbusters like Never Say Never Again, Prizzy's Honor, Once Upon a Time in America, The Cotton Club, and The Final Countdown. He produced or executive produced over 70 films, and his works received 10 Oscar nominations, including the 2005 Academy Award winner Monster and the critically acclaimed Das Boot. In 2005, Damon founded Foresight Unlimited, which handled international sales for co-financed and produced several notable films, including Two Guns and Lone Survivor. His contributions to the film industry were recognized with numerous accolades, and he remained a significant figure in independent film finance and production. Mark Damon is survived by his wife, actress Margaret Markoff, and their two children. His legacy as a visionary producer and talented actor will be remembered and celebrated by the film industry and audiences worldwide. Morgan Spurlock, who passed away at the age of 53 on May 23rd due to complications from cancer, was a renowned American documentary filmmaker writer, and television producer, known for his groundbreaking and thought-provoking works. Spurlock's legacy in the world of documentary filmmaking is both impactful and enduring. Born Morgan Valentine Spurlock on November 7, 1970, in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and raised in Beckley, West Virginia, Spurlock's early life was marked by resilience and creativity. He graduated from New York University's Tisch School of the Arts with a BFA in film in 1993. His journey into the world of filmmaking began with his award-winning play, The Phoenix, at the New York International Fringe Festival and the Route 66 American Playwriting Competition. Spurlock's most acclaimed work came with the release of his documentary, Supersize Me, in 2004. The film, which depicted his month-long experiment of eating only McDonald's food, highlighted the health risks of fast food consumption and earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Documentary Feature. The success of Super Size Me catapulted Spurlock into the limelight and established him as a leading voice in documentary filmmaking. Throughout his career, Spurlock directed and produced numerous influential documentaries, including where in the World is Osama Bin Laden? Palm Wonderful Presence, The Greatest Movie Ever Sold, Comic Con Episode 4, A Fan's Hope, and One Direction, This Is Us. His ability to tackle diverse and often controversial topics with humor and insight garnered him widespread acclaim. Despite facing personal challenges and controversies, Spurlock remained a pivotal figure in the entertainment industry. He co-founded the production company Warrior Poets and the short film content marketing company Cinelin. His innovative approach to filmmaking and dedication to truth-telling left an indelible mark on the industry. 
Morgan Spurlock's legacy is one of creativity, courage, and a relentless pursuit of truth. He is survived by his two children and will be remembered for his significant contributions to documentary filmmaking and his ability to provoke thought and inspire change. His work will continue to influence and resonate with audiences for years to come. Breaking news of the day. News 1. Pretty Woman. Star Richard Gere is on the mend after being hospitalized with pneumonia during a family vacation in Mexico. His wife Alejandra Gere shared an update on Instagram, reassuring fans that the worst is over and the 73-year-old actor is feeling much better. Alejandra posted a photo of the couple walking with their son, revealing that the entire family had been battling illness. After almost three weeks of everyone being sick in our family, Today I finally feel much better, she wrote, thanking everyone for the birthday wishes. Gear's condition worsened from a bad cough, leading to his hospitalization and pneumonia diagnosis. A representative for Gear confirmed the news but declined to comment further. The couple, married since 2018, have two sons together. Gear also has a 23-year-old son, Homer James Jigme Gear, from his previous marriage to Carrie Lowell. News 2. On June 3, Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden, appeared in a Delaware state court to face charges related to illegal gun possession. This event marks a notable historical milestone, as it is the first time in U.S. history that the child of a sitting president has faced criminal charges. Hunter Biden is accused of possessing a firearm without adhering to the necessary legal regulations a significant violation of federal gun control laws. The case has garnered considerable public and media attention, not only due to its legal implications, but also because of the direct family connection to the current president. During the trial, Hunter Biden had to respond to questions from the court and confront the evidence presented by the prosecutors. The involved parties are meticulously debating the details and evidence to determine his legal responsibility in this matter. The developments in this case could have a substantial impact on the Biden family's reputation and may set new precedents in handling cases involving the families of high-ranking officials. Hunter Biden's court appearance raises not only legal issues, but also provokes a range of reactions from the public. Some view this as part of a process ensuring that no one is above the law, regardless of their position or influence. However, there are also many who believe that this case might be exploited for political purposes, potentially escalating tensions between different factions. The progression and final outcome of this case will be closely monitored, as it could have long-lasting effects on both U.S. politics and the legal system. Meanwhile, public discourse continues to speculate on the potential implications for the Biden family and the nation's judicial system. Thank you for joining us in this heartfelt tribute. As we remember the incredible talents we've lost, let's continue to celebrate their legacies and the impact they've had on our lives. If this video resonated with you, Please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us honor these remarkable individuals and keep their memories alive. Until next time, take care and cherish the moments and people who inspire you.